Today I'll be talking about two uh, latent class model approaches, one based on the frequentist approach and the other on the Bayesian to uh, tackle the problem of imperfect reference standards in uh, individual participant data meta-analysis context. Okay, so get, to give you a little bit of overview about what I'm going to talk. Um, so this problem was motivated by the patient health questionnaire 9 database uh, that we have here in our research group. And the PHQ-9 is a widely used nine item questionnaire uh, used to screen for major depression. And it has been evaluated against multiple reference standards, including semi-structured interviews such as the SCID and fully structured interviews such as the CDN Mini. And in our database, we were able to accrue more than 100 studies consisting of over 44,000 participants, uh, of which 4,500 of them had uh, major depression cases. And you can find more about the database uh, here in our website. And the challenge with the database we currently have is that uh, in the PHQ9 database, we have, as, as I just said, we have multiple reference standards, uh, which have been shown to have um, different uh, depression diagnosing abilities. Uh, and also in the data set, we have a single, like in each study, each participant in each study received only a single uh, reference standard. So it was difficult to pull together um, the different multi, uh, multiple reference standards, which as I said, have um, different depression diagnosing capabilities. For example, our colleague uh, Wu and others have shown that by synthesizing uh, three different individual participant data meta-analyses, by including over 69,000 participants from over 200 studies that the mini categorizes major depression very frequently relative to uh, the semi-structured skid. Well, having this type of uh, property among the reference standards could lead to uh, biased estimates of the PHQ-9 sensitivity and specificity as well as depression prevalence. So, this project, we aim to propose and validate alternative models to deal with this problem so that we can accurately estimate um, the PHK9 sensitivity, specificity, as well as depression prevalence, um, as well as the reference standard sensitivity and specificity, because we do not know how accurate they are. So for that purpose, um, we propose, as I said, two different approaches to deal with this problem. First one is a frequentist approach and then a Bayesian approach. We assume that the true depression status is unknown. And in, in the frequentist approach, so if you could imagine the two by two diagnostic test accuracy table, we have the four cell frequencies. So that will naturally be described using multidomial distribution. So in our frequentist approach, we assume that uh, the two testers, meaning that the PHP-9 test and the single reference standard say the mini has, uh, have a common sensitivity and specific across studies, but each study have their own uh, prevalence. So that multinomial distribution uh, to describe that the expected proportion of tests results in each, each of the, th the four cell frequencies, we assume conditional dependence between the sensitivity of the PHQ-9 and the reference standard test, as well as between the specificity of the PHQ-9 and the reference standard test. So unlike that of Walter, if you remember his model, the frequentist Layton class model, in which he assumed conditional independence, now we introduce covariance terms uh, to describe the expected cell frequencies or the expected proportion of each cell frequency. So our model is a little bit extension of that model because we assume the conditional dependence. And we use uh, expectation maximization algorithm to estimate uh, the model pattern particularly the sensitivities and specificities of each test as well as disease prevalence. All right, so in the Bayesian approach, so I'm not gonna describe uh, the mathematical derivation because of time limits, but uh, in the Bayesian approach, again, the posterior distribution will be the multinomial distribution um, to describe the cell frequencies, conditional on of course, the unobserved disease status and model parameters. And we will use the Gaussian distribution to uh, assume the pri as a prior for the logic transform pool sensitivity, specificity, depression prevalence, and random effects. 
but the uniform distribution was used to describe um, the precision parameters as hyper priors. And uh, we used the Markov chain Monte Carlo as implemented in the RJAX uh, to sample from the marginal posterior distribution because it was difficult to do it analytically. Okay, so again, I'm not gonna describe the simulation design, but we have done an extensive simulation study by varying um, different model parameters as well as data characteristics. And I'll just show you uh, for a single scenario where we have uh, done the simulation 1000 times. And this is the case where we assume the pH kinase and stiff and specificity to be 70% and tau one square, tau square are the BQ study variances for the logic transform sensitivity and specificity. K is the number of studies N is the number of participants in each disease group, high is the prevalence, the depression prevalence. And we assume data, uh, we generated data using the conditional dependence and assume the reference standard, which is the mean in this case as imperfect. So this table shows the bias and root mean square error of the four uh, primary parameters of interest. That's the pH kinase sensitivity and specificity as well as the mean sensitivity and specificity. The BRAM stands for the standard by weird random effects model used to fit meta-analysis of individual participant data analysis. And this is our frequentist conditional dependence latent class model. And this is the BAG and conditional dependence latent class model. So just the summary or the highlight of this result is that when the reference standard is imperfect, the standard by Virhand effects model uh, severely underestimates the PHQ9 sensitivity, but it does well in estimating the PHQ9 specificity um, as can be seen in the table. Uh, but the frequentist conditional depends on later class model more or less has an acceptable bias and root mean square error for both the PHQ9 as well as the mean reference standard. However, the Bayesian conditional dependence, dependence later on class model again uh, hugely underestimates the reference standard sensitivity. Otherwise, uh, again, it has acceptable results. So of course, the reference standards root mean square are also is high. This is mainly because of the prior choice we made. Uh, to fit this, we just use semi-informative prior uh, for the sensitivities as well as for all other parameters. But uh, if we had updated our prior informative portion, this result would have been much better. Uh, so it's highly sensitive to the prior information used for the Bayesian uh, latent class model. Now associated with this simulation scenario, we have also fitted the models to a real data set. So our PHQ9 database where the PHQ9 was compared again the mini reference standard at the standard cutoff of 10 for the PHQ9. So um, very related to the simulation study, again, the bivariant effects model yielded in a much smaller PHQ9 sensitivity. Otherwise, um, the, the PHQ9 specificity was more or less similar to the proposed models. Again, the Bayesian conditional dependence latent class model had a much smaller uh, sensitivity estimate for the reference standards. Again, in line with our simulation findings. Otherwise, um, the mean seems to be highly specific, almost perfect, uh, uh, but in terms of sensitivity, it seems it's imperfect. Even with the frequentist conditional dependence latent class model, it's about 90%. So uh, the home take message here is that we have uh, proposed both uh, latent class model approaches using frequentist and uh, Bayesian approaches, which can handle uh, multiple reference standards. And that the Bayesian effects model performs well uh, in IPDMA context uh, when the reference standards are assumed to be perfect. This is expected, but when the reference standards are imperfect, they underestimate the pitch kinase sensitivity. And also we have shown that latent class models are good alternatives to deal with the problem of imperfect reference standards in the context of individual participant data meta-analysis. Thank you very much for your attention.